today we are talking about puppies mouthing, biting and chewing. So we're going to talk about two topics today. One is puppy chewing on things around the house and the second is that mouthing and over arousal that happens when they're um, interacting with us. So puppies explore using their nose and their mouth. They love to smell things and they love to put things in their in mouth to investigate. Uh, so really important that we puppy proof our home as much as we possibly can. So put things up out of reach, um, tidy up, you know, instead of just dropping the shoes at the front door as you walk in, make that mental note, I'm going to put them away in the wardrobe and shut the door. Little things like that can really help. Uh, shut doors to limit access to um, areas of the house. Uh, absolutely use management tools uh, like installing a little baby gate uh, and using puppies crate playpen area uh, for when you can't supervise. So what we want to do is to teach puppy uh, what we do want them to do. Uh, so really natural doggy behavior to chew on things. Um, they're not just going to do it as a puppy. Sorry, they're not just going to grow out of it. Uh, so we need to show them what we would like them to do instead. So making sure we provide them with lots of alternatives to chew on. So chewy toys, chewy treats, stuffed Kongs, lots of things for them to sink those little teeth into. And be prepared. Uh, so I like to have a few stuffed Kongs in the fridge ready to go. Uh, a little tub of some chewy treats around as well uh, so that you're always one step ahead of puppy and ready to go. Make use of lots of free enrichment toys. Uh, these ones we do supervise puppy with, uh, but lots of things we can get out of our recycling. So plastic bottles, we take the lid off, pop some food in it. They can crunch and chew and shake it. Uh, egg cartons, cereal boxes, empty toilet rolls. Again, you can give it to them as is, or you can pop some food in it. Um, they love to shred and pull apart the cardboard. And I know you then have cardboard to pick up off the floor, but they haven't chewed your really expensive running shoes and they haven't destroyed the TV remote. So a little bit of cardboard, um, a much better option. Okay, now what happens is that chewing increases at around four months of age. Uh, so this is because puppy is starting to teeth. Uh, so what they need to do is that they have feel that need, they need to chew more to pacify those inflamed gums. Uh, and so again, it is about being prepared with our puppies and thinking about it in terms of what we would do if we had a little baby teething. So baby teething, we use the little cool teething rings that they can kind of chew on uh, with our puppies. Uh, the same thing, think about giving them cool, cold, chewy treats um, that they can really sink those teeth into and it'll help those inflamed gums. So stuffed Kong kept in the fridge. If they're really good with their Kong, you can get the food out pretty quickly. You can absolutely pop it in the freezer. Uh, most dogs like to chew on a carrot, so a nice cold carrot out the fridge can help a puppy. Uh, and you can make some really yummy ice blocks, popsicles, lots of little recipes you can get on the internet for that kind of thing. Now, teething finishes at approximately six months of age. Uh, puppy is still gonna be uh, chewing though. You will see uh, that it's not as intense because the their adult teeth are through now um, but like I said it's not just a puppy behavior the chewing on stuff um, it's a dog behavior uh, so they're going to be doing this for the next 15 years uh, so all about being prepared and teaching our puppy what we do want them to chew on okay now sometimes what happens in the moment we get cross and we decide we're going to use punishment so I want to talk quickly about the no word so it can seem like a temporary fix. We temporarily stop the behavior. The dog stops what they're doing, but it doesn't address the underlying reason for why the dog is chewing. And a lot of it is because they're a dog and they want to chew. So they still need to chew. So what they do is they go find something else to sink their teeth into. So we might have said no uh, as they've chewed on our shoes. And then we turn around and a minute later, they've got the TV remote in, in their mouth. We then might use the no uh, and we turn around and now they're chewing on the leg of the coffee table or they've gone outside and they're chewing the reticulation. So instead, what I want to be doing is showing them what I do want. So redirect and reinforce what we want. So what I do want is them maybe um, directing onto their mat, their crate or their bed so we can call puppy over, encourage them on there with a yummy stuffed Kong or a tasty chew. And we really want to avoid that punishment because it does damage the human animal bond. It is much better to think about what we do want puppy to do and set them up for success. 
Okay, mouthing, this is the one that hurts. So puppy has learnt how to play by interacting with litter mates. And if you picture in your head puppies playing, it's what they do. They chew on each other's ears, they grab each other um, around the feet and the neck and they wrestle and they have lots of fun doing lots of mouthy, chewing, biting behaviour. So they love to chase, they love to jump, they love to grab, and they love to mouth. Uh, and they've practiced that with their litter mates for at least, um, you know, the first few months before they've come into your home. So then they arrive with us and they start to bond with our family and then they want to initiate play. And so they start to play the only way they know how, chasing, jumping, grabbing, mouthing. That's, that's them, that's a puppy. Uh, so I do kind of half joke, but take it as a compliment, your puppy is wanting to play with you. So that's not my solution though. What we are going to do is teach puppy again what we do want, and so we can teach people how to play with people. So tug toys, tug toys, and more tuggy toys. Um, so I like a nice long toy uh, because it means that they're going to grab that toy before they reach your ankles. So it's going to be something you can stand upright with and it touches the ground. Uh, it also means your hands are well out of the way from those sharp puppy teeth as well. The toy is attached to you and all members of the household to use it. Uh, if you've got kids in the family, um, one thing I love to encourage is that they can make their own little tuggy toy. So a little bit of polar fleece and you just plait it together uh, and they've got their own little special toy they can play with with puppy. Now, like any game, there are rules to keep. So the rules of tug. First of all, I like to try to keep the tug low to the ground. I don't want puppy do, doing too much um, excessive jumping and leaping um, in their little growing bodies. Um, be animated and have fun. It is a game, um, so join in the fun with them. Uh, let puppy win sometimes. Um, I don't want to play a game where someone else always wins all the time. So give them some wins. It kind of gets them back for more and keeps them, you know, excited about the game. Also really important, we teach a swap cue as well. So when we want to finish the game, um, we can tr um, trade it. So we can use a treat. So as they're playing tug, you're going to get a treat in your other hand, present it towards their mouth. Uh, they will spit out that tug to get the yummy treat. Uh, if they're really toy motivated, we can absolutely do the same thing, but you use two toys. So you stop playing with one toy, let it go, pick up the other one and start shaking that and making it um, making it animated. So they kind of let go of the first toy and then you can um, tell them they're wonderful and they get um, reinforced by playing with the second toy. You can then add a verbal cue to it. So I say swap. Uh, and so they learn whenever they hear this swap word, it means that it's going to be traded for something else. And this works really nicely for when they pick up things around the house they're not supposed to have. So they pick up a sock or something um, that we can absolutely use the swap cue uh, instead of them running off with the item that they shouldn't have. Now the added benefit of using a tug is that it becomes a great reinforcer for training. So you'll see a lot of advanced dogs out there and they're training, yes, with food as um, reinforcement, but also they love to play with their handlers and they're playing great games of tug. So it helps with your training as you progress. Okay, now when your puppy goes wild, it's going to happen. Uh, so when they really start that really intense, mouthy, bitey, um, lunging, launching themselves at you, uh, what's happening is that puppy is overtired. Huge big red, red flag goes up for me that puppy is very, very overtired. So young pups need around 18 hours of sleep a day, so it's very easy for them to get overtired. And like small children, um, it's easy and it's difficult for them to calm down and take a nap. So they get easily overtired, but then find it really hard to calm down to be able to um, rest. So we can help them. So if we think about an over overtired child, uh, what we would do, so we've got, a, you know, they've had a really big day and instead of going to bed, they're like leaping off the couch and running around a million miles an hour, completely overtired and completely crazy. Uh, what we could do is do a calm activity. So we try to do something like we'll sit quietly and read a book and help those arousal levels decrease so that they then can be calm enough to be able to then fall asleep. Uh, so we try to find calm activities to help them lower those arousal levels so it is then possible for them to relax and unwind. 
we're going to put the same idea onto our puppies so that overtired puppy who's lunging launching going crazy calm quiet activity the biggest one i choose is a snuffle mat so sniffing is a really nice calm way to relax them uh, and then what happens is they're fallen they're then well enough and and relaxed enough to be able to fall asleep um, so snuffle mats are a great one to redirect those crazy puppies onto. So with the snuffle mat, you just scatter it with some dry food and it kind of goes into all of those little folds of fabric and they've got to use their nose to sniff and snuffle it. Um, I've had so many clients send me photos of their puppies actually asleep on the snuffle mat uh, and my puppy has done the same many a time. A uh, really nice way to help them calm down and rest. Okay, now again, in the spur of the moment, we may be tempted to use punishment. Um, the no word, if they're already really razzed up and over aroused, that intense mouthing behavior, um, if we're reactive to that, it's only going to increase their arousal. So instead, we need to be the calm one in the relationship. We need to be able to help them calm down and then sleep will follow. And again, punishment damages that human-animal bond. Much better to help them calm down so that they can then um, rest and sleep. Okay, so in summary, our two topics we've covered today. So chewing, they explore with their mouths, so we need to make sure we puppy-proof that house, be prepared, have those Kongs and chewy treats and enrichment toys ready to go. Cool chews for those teething months, and be mindful, chewing is a really normal dog behavior. They're not gonna grow out of it. Uh, so let's show them what we do want them to do. Okay, so the mouthy bitey stuff. So we can teach how, puppy how to play with us, use a tuggy toy, have fun, remember the rules of the game. So teach that swap cue. Uh, and um, also remember that puppies can be really overtired. So that overtired puppy, we get that really intense behavior. Uh, and so we can use that calm snuffle mat activity to help them relax. Um, so invest in a really nice little fun tuggy toy for puppy, a snuffle mat, uh, and hopefully you will see your puppy come on leaps and bounds. Okay, happy training.